Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make brioche, and this is what it looks like. It has a beautiful golden brown crust, and yet inside it is wonderfully light and tender. So a brioche is an enriched bread, and by that I mean it's got lots of butter and lots of eggs. So it needs a long kneading period. So I do recommend you using a stand mixer and you will need both your paddle attachment and your dough hook for this. Now, the first thing we need is three and a quarter cups, which is 425 grams of all purpose flour. I'm using unbleached all purpose. You may know that as plain flour and just put that in your bowl. And then you will need two teaspoons, eight grams of a kosher salt. And then you will need one and a half teaspoons of, of SAF gold instant yeast. Now there's a red and there's a gold. And the gold we use for uh, doughs that are rich in fat, butter and eggs. And what I like about instant yeast is it's used by professionals because you know you don't have to proof it. You just add it right in with your other dry ingredients and it gives a really nice rise to your doughs. So I'm just going to put my paddle attachment on here and just mix to all those together. Okay. And then you will need three tablespoons which is 40 grams of cold milk. Now, our eggs and our milk are going, we want them cold right out of the, uh, the refrigerator. And because the reason for that is we're gonna be kneading this dough a long time and it's gonna heat the dough up. So that's why we're starting with cold ingredients. So three tablespoons, 40 grams of cold milk. And you can use like a, like a full fat, a whole milk, or you, I'm just using the reduced fat today. And then you will need five large cold eggs, which is 240 grams. Put that in there. And then I'm just going to beat this with my paddle attachment just till everything's mixed together. Okay, so it's just mixed together roughly. So now what I'm gonna do is switch over to my dough hook and we're gonna start that long kneading. When I say long, I'm talking like 20 to 25 minutes. So it's really gonna heat up our mixer. But that's gonna give us a wonderfully, like that nice fine grain, tender. Oh, so good. Well worth the effort. So, okay. Put the dough hook. So now what we're going to do, we're going to um, put our mixer speed on first speed and we're going to beat it for four minutes. So set your timer and then increase your mixer speed to the second speed and beat an additional three minutes. So it's seven minutes altogether. Four minutes on first speed, three minutes on second speed. Okay, so finished that. It's seven minutes total. So I'm going to show you. Let's take this off my <laughs> my hook. As you can see, this is a really strong dough at this point, and that's what we want because we're going to be adding a lot of butter. So we have to start off with a strong dough. So I'm just going to show you here. See, <laughs> really strong. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to add gradually a third of a cup, 65 grams of granulated white sugar, or you could even use like a super fine white sugar. I'm going, and what we're going to do is gradually over five minutes, and we're going to have our mixer speed on second. So what I'm just going to put maybe, you know, like a tablespoon in, and then we're going to put the mixer on and then once you don't see any sugar anymore, then add another tablespoon and another and over the five minutes. So second speed, five minutes. Okay, So that's been five minutes and we've added all the sugar. So as you can see from last time, the dough is a little softer now 
adding that, whoops, <laughs> adding that sugar. So take that off. I'm just going to give this a scrape. So now we need to add our butter. You will need one cup, which is 225 uh, grams of cold, unsalted butter. And then what I do is just take a piece of parchment paper because it's really cold right now. So what we're going to do is pound it until it's pliable but still cold. So, and yeah, I know people are going to say, well, why don't you just leave it out till it, it softens a little bit? And I don't know the chemistry, but somehow if you do that and let it come to room temperature that way, it changes the composition of it. So what we're going to do is just put it like that and then take a rolling pin and just pound it until it's pliable but still cold. Okay, yeah, that feels pretty good. So now, if you run it over the side of your counter and it doesn't crack, then it's about right. Yeah, so that's good. Just peel that back. And then I'm just going to add all of this to our dough. And then we're going to start really kneading it. It's going to take probably, you know, 10, 12 minutes. I mean, again, a lot of it has to do with your mixer, like your speed as opposed to my speed. So it could take a little less or a little more. Just keep that in mind. So just kind of put it into pieces. Okay, lots of butter. <laughs> so now, put your mixer speed on the second speed. And we're going to beat it, like I said, until I, I would, I'm going to say, say 10 minutes until it's going to clean the bowl and when you touch it, it's going to be smooth and silky. It's not, you don't want it really sticky. Nice and smooth, silky, but I will show you that. So second speed. Okay, so what you're looking for is it's, it cleans the bowl and when you touch it, it's not really sticky. If it's still really sticky, then it needs to be kneaded <laughs> more. So, but there's also a test we can do. Just take a small bit of the dough and, oh, it's just silky. <laughs> and then just gently pull it. Move it around, gently pull it. And we want it to not rip and then to get really thin. You can see? If it was tearing, then that's another sign you need to you need to knead it. I keep saying that. <laughs> so as you can see, just keep pulling it. Oh, yeah. That's what you're looking for. It's really thin. So it's done. You will need a large bowl, and then I'm just going to put a little bit of just a flavorless oil. You know, it means a vegetable, canola corn, even a little olive oil. Or you could sp spray it with one of those nonstick sprays. And then I just take a paper towel, and you don't have to worry about this dough sticking with all that butter. So now what I'm going to do is put it into the bowl. That's good. I'm going to take the uh, temperature of the dough. I have an infrared uh, thermometer here, handy tool. So I'm at 73. Perfect. Uh, that's uh, 23 Celsius. Because what we're looking for, we want to let this proof for one hour at room temperature. So we want our dough at room temperature right now. So you want room temperature means somewhere between 73, 76 Fahrenheit, which is 23, 24 Celsius. And then just what I put a large bowl because it will rise a bit at this point. And so give it some room. And then I'm just covering it with plastic wrap. So you want to, we're going to let it proof for one hour at room temperature. Now, a lot of times, especially in the winter, our kitchens are cold. 
So what I typically do, if that's the case, is I put it, have your oven turned off, but put it in your oven and put the uh, oven light on. And then that's a really good temperature. If you have one of these infrared, you can kind of um, keep track of whether it's getting too hot or something, then turn your oven light off. So we're going to let this proof for one hour. So it's been about a half an hour. So what we're going to do right now is stretch the dough. And we do that to equalize the temperature plus to strengthen it. So what you do is you take one end and just pull it and put it back on itself. Go around 180 degrees, do the same, and then turn, turn, and then just flip it over and cover it. And then we're going to let it sit the remaining half hour, so an hour total. And then what you're going to do is just after another half hour, you're just going to take this whole bowl and put it into your refrigerator. We want this to chill overnight. And we do that. One, it improves the flavor of our brioche. And two, this uh, dough is quite soft right now. And if you chill it, it's much easier to shape. So that's what you do. So now our dough has chilled overnight. So it's really cold. So before I do that, what you will need is two loaf pans. This is nine by five inch, which is 23 inches, which is 20 three by 13 centimeters. And then you can either really butter your pans or I'm just going to use one of these nonstick sprays. You really want to spray that your pans well so that the brioche does not stick. So that's done. And then what we're going to do is divide our dough into 12 equal size pieces. So if you have a scale, it'll be much easier to use a scale than to try to eyeball that. So 12, what we'll do is each piece will be about 80 grams. And kind of cut, you can use a knife or one of these bench scrapers. You don't want to pull your dough, just cut down. And I'm just going to put all those on a that. Okay, so let's double check. It's 80 grams each. So now we're going to put six of, in each pan. You don't want to flour your counter because this dough is pretty sticky, but you can flour your hands. And then take your round, one round. And then just flatten it into a round, <laughs> round into a round, like so. And then just take, kind of put it all into the center like that, and then flip it over, and then with the palm of your hand, just roll it. Form it into a nice round, give it some surface tension there, like so. And then we're going to put that in there. So just keep doing that for all of them. Okay, my last round here. So as, as you can see here, I've staggered them. And then I'm gonna, just going to check the temperature. So that's about, my rounds are about 52 degrees, which is about 11 C. So that's pretty cold. So now what we have to do is just cover them lightly with plastic wrap and we're going to have to proof them. Because those rounds are so cold, it, this is going to take a while because first they got to come up to room temperature and then they have to proof. So I'm saying, you know, two and a half, three hours, long time. But, and again, you want to proof them at room temperature, that's 73 to 76. 23-24C, you know, again, you can put it in your uh, turned off oven with the oven light on. So what we're looking for is, I'll just, they will 
like rise. So they're going to all form in and, and fill in all the gaps here and come up probably about three quarters of the way up your pan. So almost double it in size. And then when they're up, they're proofed, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. So we're now ready to bake our brioche. It's actually been about three hours. As you can see, they've kind of grown together almost about three quarters of the way up in my pan. So now what we're going to do is brush them with a little bit of beaten egg. That'll give us that beautiful shine. So just have your egg at room temperature and just with a whisk or you can use a fork. Just break it up. Okay. And then with the pastry brush, I'm just going to lightly brush the top with the beaten egg. So now you can leave it like that, or if you want, I'm, I've got some pearl sugar and I'm going to sprinkle that just on one of the loaves. I'll leave one plain. Depends how you're going to use, you know, if you just want to eat it plain, then the sugar on top is very nice. But if you were going to use this like for, to eat with a savory dish, you probably want to not put the sugar on it. You probably put some sesame seeds also if you'd like that. But we'll just do one loaf with the pearl. So now everyone's oven is a little different. I would say 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, rotate your pan about halfway through baking and they will rise and they will turn a beautiful golden brown. And if you tap it, it will sound hollow. So 25, 30 minutes. Hey, so our brioche is done. Don't they look gorgeous? Beautiful glossy color, nice and brown. Tap them, sound hollow. If you actually want to, you could put, insert a thermometer in there and it should reg register 190 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 88 Celsius. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do now, as I put the pans on a wire rack, I'm gonna let them cool about five minutes and then we'll take them out of the pans. So to take our brioche out of the pan, I like to first, I got an offset spatula or knife, just run it to make sure it's not sticking. You never know. And then I'm just gonna, pans are still hot, so be careful. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So now they're too warm to uh, slice. So what we're going to do is let these cool to room temperature. And when we come back, we will try some. So our brioche is cooled to room temperature. So I'm using a serrated knife. Do a couple slices here. Doesn't that look gorgeous? It's very nice and soft. Smells wonderful. <laughs> now, if I'm just eating it plain, I'm not going to put any butter on it. I like to have the, the, the pearl sugar on top. Because we didn't add a lot of sugar to this um, bread dough. Oh, wonderful. I like that little bit of pearl sugar, nice crunch, little bit of sweetness. The crust is quite thin, nice and flaky, and the bread, I mean, it's buttery, it's soft, it's tender, it almost melts in your mouth. I mean, I, I just eat it plain like this. I mean, you could put some more butter on there, very nice with some jam. It makes great toast, so, you know, a really great bread to make, so try it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.